Hi Booktube, Aaron here. I hope you're doing okay. Today I'm going to be doing the I am a reader tag. Uh, this was a tag that was created by Penguin Random House. Um, and I was tagged to do this a couple of weeks ago by Alan from uh, Big Hard Books and Classics. Um, and I'm very, very grateful that uh, Alan uh, tagged me. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Um, mainly because I'd seen this a while ago. Um, found the prompts really intriguing, thought about doing it, um, and then forgot. Um, and so I'm, yeah, I'm glad that I was kind of reminded that this tag exists as well. Um, there, are, there are eight prompts, so I'll try to go through them quite quickly. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, the first prompt is choose one word that describes being a reader. Um, and I think for me, the word would be curiosity. Um, you, know, you could talk about being well read or educated or you know, things like that um but that doesn't necessarily um you know sort of cover all kinds of readers uh, there are other readers who read for escapism there are forgetful <laughs> readers who might learn something by reading and then totally forget about it um and so i feel like curiosity on the whole it it, it seems to cover a nice wide range of readers and Definitely for me, um, it yeah, that's kind of at the core of um, why I read, and it's one of the qualities of reading, or maybe that's not right, the right way of putting it, but yeah, I, I hope that kind of <laughs> makes sense. Um, number two is, what was the very first book that you fell in love with? Um, if I'm being, I think, totally honest, it's probably a little picture book called uh, The Little Blue Tractor. Um, can't remember who wrote it, um, and it's a, a little picture book about a blue tractor trying to get all the farmyard animals um, safe out of the fields into the barn uh, before a snowstorm <laughs> because the the farmer doesn't believe that it's going to snow. Um, and I yeah really liked that when I was a kid, um, and would quite like to find a copy actually because it'd be a good one for a <laughs> for a reread. Um, but when I when I think about um, the books that really made me fall in love uh, with reading. I, I always think of Tolkien, um, and so particularly uh, The Lord of the Rings and really The Hobbit. Um, and this is the edition of, of The Hobbit that I was given when I was a kid. Um, and I, as you can see, did my best to destroy it. Um, but yeah, for me, you know, these books kind of sum up what really got me excited about reading at quite a young age. Um, and so even though the little blue tractor is, is <laughs> there in the background, um, yeah, I think, I think the Hobbit is, you know, kind of took it to another level. Um, number three, uh, hardbacks or hard, hard covers or paperbacks. Um, generally I much prefer paperbacks as you can probably see behind me. Uh, a lot of my books are paperbacks. Um, I think I, I, I generally do find them a little more comfortable. Uh, for reading, um, but also I like the idea that um, you don't have to be too precious with them, they're, they're cheaper than hardbacks and particularly when most of the time I tend to get my, my books second hand as well so um, I'm not paying, I'm not always paying the full price for the book either so I, I really don't mind just throwing them into a backpack if I'm, if I'm going somewhere um, you know, I, I quite like that. I don't mind them getting beaten up. Um, and that's part of the reason I think why um, I don't, or for a long time, I haven't particularly loved hardcovers. Um, you know, with <laughs> this edition of the, the Hobbit as an example, I, I, I treated this just the same as I would have treated um, a, a paperback when I was a kid, just throwing it around and leaving it in, uh, <laughs> in places I shouldn't probably. Um, and so it's gotten a bit beaten up and the, the idea that um, a dust cover can get really mangled is always um, kind of torturing me when I'm reading a hard bad, uh, hardback book. But um, I think particularly the Everyman's Library um, hardbacks, so I've got a couple here to kind of show uh, sort of for the, the variety. These are kind of um, pulling me over uh, and when it comes to hardbacks these are the ones I do quite like to get um, and I just like the way they look I like the simplicity of of these earlier ones um, 
I don't know, they, they just look really good and they, they feel nice in the hands. Um, but yeah, I also like the way these newer ones look as well. And so I'm, I, I'm kind of being pulled, uh, but it's, you know, it's all over the place. And even with hard, uh, with, with, with paperbacks, there's a lot of variety. You've got your, you know, say like your sort of general trade paperback, like a Penguin Modern Classic. Um, it just feels like a normal book. Um, then you've got your Penguin, like deluxe editions. And I love, you know, just how crazily floppy these are. Um, and and the, the French flaps. So I mean, I do love these, and the fact that they're so floppy. Um, <laughs> I got this Borjos one as well, and I just like the cover of this. I think that's why I've got it. Um, you know, the, the, the fact that they are so floppy, again, make me feel like I can just throw them in a bag. You wouldn't really want to because they're they're lovely, and you'd kind of ruin them, like I've uh, started to do with this with this Borjos one. Um, but again, you know. And then you got the, the bigger deluxe editions, which, you know, are, are still floppy. Um, but again, I, I, I still think of this as, even though it is a paperback, and it's got its its, its French flaps, I, I, I kind of think of this as a hardcover, even though it's uh, a paperback, just because of how big it is, and how kind of square and <laughs> difficult it is. So, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like both. Probably still prefer paperbacks, but um, yeah, there's some doubts being cast there. Um, I think that, that that prompt kind of struck a nerve. Um, number four is, has reading shaped your identity? Um, it's certainly influenced, I suppose, certain areas of my identity. Um, but I don't know, it makes it sound like it's really foundational, um, whereas there are probably a lot more uh, you know, certainly quite a few more things that are more important, I think, that would would shape your identity more than just what you read. Uh, number five, uh, what book do you tend to read when you need to be, uh, when you need to be comforted? I'm struggling with my handwriting there. Um, I, I don't particularly go back to particular books when I need to be comforted. I, I have noticed certain kinds of books are quite comforting and satisfying. Um, Sherlock Holmes books and, and things like that always um, have a kind of comforting feeling. Um, I also like the, the feeling of rereading a poem that I've I've read maybe many times before um, and just going over it really really slowly it kind of resets my um, my reading clock in a way. Um, number six is who taught you to be a reader or did you do it on your own? I can't really remember there's probably quite a lot of people. Um, I'm, I'm fairly certain I could at least read a little bit before I went to school. Um, so I, you know, my parents would have had a, a lot to do with it. But, but it. but if not, there'd certainly be a lot of teachers who have pushed me as well. So um, yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> um, number seven is uh, describe your ideal reading lounge. Um, it, it would really be a a room much like this. I've got my bookcases there. I, I like the idea of just taking up as much wall space as, as possible with bookshelves. Um, I, the, the, only those bookshelves behind me are, are there. I, I would quite like to have a room that's just full of books, um, but um, the, the arrangement of this house and where the radiators are and where the doors are, it, it's, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it would work. Um, but, you know, this one is pretty much ideal. I've got a nice chair. I've got a, um, a footstool. Um, I've got a variety of, of lamps and lights in different places. Um, I, I don't like ceiling lights particularly, so I um, like to have light coming from different directions and it feels kind of all kind of equaled out. Um, and if I want it to be a bit darker or a bit brighter, I can mess around with that. So... Um, yeah, I'd, I'd pretty much have it, um, but um, yeah, I'm always looking to improve. And then uh, number eight is what book changed the way that you act or the way you see the world? Um, and this is a, an, another one, um, kind of like the, the, the one about has, has reading shaped your identity, where I'm just a little sceptical um, about it. 
and I'm sure that there are plenty of books you can read to inform you on, on certain subjects. I think this is certainly geared towards readers who maybe read more either self-help books or maybe even books on, on current affairs, which, uh, to, to be honest, I'm not terribly good <laughs> at reading those kinds of things. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I found it difficult to strictly um, um, sort of go in with the exact wording of that prompt. Um, but I was thinking of a book that, um, I suppose, added a layer of uh, nuance to an issue that I already have opinions about, and it just got me thinking about it slightly differently. It didn't necessarily change my mind. It didn't change the way I live my life. Um, but it just complicated uh, the issue and deepened the issue for me. Um, and that was, it was just a, a detail really in, in this book, um, The Frayed Atlantic Edge. Um, and it was, it, was, it was talking about wind farms um, and how essentially there are these, um, I think these areas in Scotland where, uh, I think in Scotland it's quite easy, um, at least compared to other parts of the UK, to, to put up wind farms. Um, and a lot of the, the people who live in these rural communities don't particularly like the fact that they're, you know, that their hills and, and valleys are being uh, covered with, with, with wind turbines. Um, whereas I think there's a lot more sort of planning stuff that has to, um, you have to kind of jump through to get wind farms set up in, uh, in England and Wales. Um, and it was just the, the valid point, I suppose, that some people don't really want to be um, <laughs> waking up to, to see these things out their window, which is, yeah, I, I, I still don't, I wouldn't really agree with those people. I, I would much prefer, um, you know, to, if I was living in a cabin in the middle of nowhere, but I had to look out at um, an oil refinery. Um, which you know, I have seen places that are really remote, and they have, you know, an oil refinery or a factory or you know, sort of a really t dirty, horrible place, and they're there because barely anyone lives there, um, and that energy is, um, it, it's it's going to the, um, you know, the bigger sort of urban places on on, on the whole, you know, that's where the majority of the energy is going, um, and so the you know the, the the issue that is at least raised is you know just realizing that how dependent uh, we, we are in urban places to um to, to these rural places that are being used to generate energy um but, you know I, i'd much prefer um you know to live in the middle of nowhere and just have wind turbines rather than um you know an oil refinery or or, or, or whatever it is so um yeah I, I i still wouldn't really complain about it and i would have a a bit of a um I don't know, a bit of an issue with, with uh, people who put up these posters saying uh, <laughs> no to the turbines or whatever it is, um, because the alternative is even worse. Uh, but I, <laughs> with that uh, rabbit hole out of the way, um, I will leave the tag there. Um, if, if you'd like to do this tag, um, if you find the questions intriguing, um, then please feel free to consider yourself tagged and give it a go. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.